Hello and welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley. And this is another video in our series on Derbyshire churches. We're here in the Derbyshire Dales in the little church of St. Philip at Lowe. This is a little Victorian Gothic church. I haven't seen a date around here. Probably will find one at the east end looking around. But it appears to me to date from perhaps the 17, or the 1870s or the 1880s, even the 1890s. Um, the oldest memorial, well, in fact, the oldest memorial here is, uh, the only memorial is to John Lee, who died in London, 1869. So that means perhaps late 1860s, this building. It's an interesting example of a type of church interior that's found more often in the cities, this mixture of brick and stone. But here we are in deepest rural Derbyshire. This may very well be the last church I visit today. Now, that won't make any difference for you watching on YouTube, but it does for me. Just because the light is going, it's only January after all, in the middle of January. And here we are, beautiful building. So we'll have a look around and enjoy this Victorian building. This is perhaps the Victorian equivalent of what All Saints Bradley was in the 14th century, a small village church for ordinary people. So let's have a look around. St. Philip's is a, a pretty standard Victorian church. We have these light fittings, and you can see that this has been adapted, this central um, light fitting has been adapted from one that originally held three oil lamps. There are, there's an oil lamp bracket here with the remains of the oil lamp on it, about the chimney, and along the sides we have two more oil lamp brackets there, and evidence of two more along here. It, it is all 19th century, the font is a, a simple octagonal affair, the seating, 19th century benches. The interesting thing is these walls, you've got these like almost random tiles stuck in. Um, probably Minton. We're not that far from Stoke-on-Trent after all. Minton makes sense. Minton was the, a big tile manufacturer in Stoke-on-Trent. The use of brick, brick courses with stone courses. We've got this lovely organ here. Now it's, it's locked so you can't see what the maker's nameplate is. But it, your actual pipes are up there, elevated, and you can see how the console is stuck in at the bottom here. The pulpit is actually an old one. It probably comes from somewhere else. Well, it must come from somewhere else. And probably one of the villages around here was replacing their church furnishings. They were getting rid of this, uh, what looked like the upper part of a three-decker. It's quite a narrow pulpit. Uh, just climb up here and have a look at it. Yes, it's quite a narrow example. And so they were getting rid of it, and they said, do you want our spare pulpit? And the church here said, thank you very much. You can see there the, the little organ console. Looks like it's a two-manual with a pedal board. And, of course, the collection of hymn books that all working organs should have beside them. Let's have a look. It interests me. What kind of hymns have we got here? We have... We have the, <laughs> what's this one? The London Mission Hymn Book with tunes. Hymns A and M. That makes sense. That would be sort of your normal. It does actually look at the back. They've got hymns A and M. Well, they had hymns A and M. It's the hymns ancient modern, your normal. Um, parish choir manual. Songs of praise. All, all your old classics out down there. Excellent. And oh, that lovely pulpit. Up into the chancel, you'll notice there's, there is this lectern on a box. And the lectern on a box, again, this is so that you can get up here and you can stand behind the lectern and everyone can see you, which is always a good idea, and everyone can hear you, which is even more important. Here again, the same design. We've got a wonderful tiled reredos, and that is definitely Minton. The owners of Minton would actually give tiles to churches. So this arrangement is going to be Minton 
Do you want some spare tiles? Glory in excelsis. And then in the middle, we have the cup of blessing, which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? There's a little piscina. Very interesting sort of shoot piscina, really. <laughs> sort of semi-industrial almost. And we look all the way west, this stripy interior. It's a beautiful example of a, a small Victorian Gothic church. And again, one where they've said, you know what? Let's not pretend it's medieval. Let's build a Victorian Gothic church using its medieval forms, but using modern materials. You can see here the uh, rail. And this rail here, this low screen, actually is very practical because it's the step. And unless you go up the main steps, you've come a cropper. And there we have a modern well, I say modern, that's not a modern electric fire, is it? That is at least 30 years old, probably 40 years old. And here we are looking up at the altar. So it's, you can see it's a very simple building in its own, but it's, in its own way, it's just, okay, let's show off with all this different color. You've got different colored brick here, different colored stone. You've got all these tiles. It's a riot of color, even in a building that is structurally very simple and you've even got a recycled pulpit which I, I, I like that a recycled pulpit why not one of the neighbors getting rid of one do you want our pulpit and so we proceed back to the back you can see there's just a single bell ding dong bell so it's a, a marvelous building lovely organ um, I say it's locked. It'd be interesting to hear it, actually, because that clearly is the original organ, although it's obviously been put in in front of a window. Now, that suggests to me originally they had a harmonium and then someone has bought an organ, and they've put it in where they can, and it's where the harmonium was. Well, the harmonium's only little. The organ has got this great big set of uh, pipes, and so elevated and partly blocking out one of the windows. Well, we'll go outside before the light fails completely and we're in the dark. So, see you outside. So here we are now outside at Atlow and you can see that the, the light is going and the sun has vanished below the western horizon. The Derbyshire evening is coming. It's a beautiful light out here in the evening. I. Uh, I do enjoy visiting Derbyshire in the evening, but there we are. And having had a look around at some of the graves, it looks to me as if my supposition about the pulpit is wrong. That in fact there was a chapel of ease here before the present church, because there's gravestones that are clearly older than that building. And that pulpit then will come from the chapel of ease that then has been replaced with the current Victorian building. Probably the Victorian building is bigger and more convenient than the old chapel. It would be interesting to know how old the chapel was. There's also some very old yew trees here, which is always a good sign that there was a church here before the present one. So we'll have a look around the outside and have a little bit of, of a look around this little gra old graveyard here. So we're down here looking at St Philip's. You can see how the porch on the south side is balanced on the other side by a vestry. Now this is the old graveyard. It's, many of the graves are quite recent, but there's some from the 1840s, and that building is later than the 1840s with that interior. Down in the valley, there is a, a river, a little stream running by. There doesn't seem to be much in the way of evidence of medieval field systems, but there is some medieval work there, which makes you wonder. And you have, up above the old graveyard, you have the church. And the graveyard being here to the west, again, is, is a bit odd. It's here, the ancient yew trees. It's a bit odd. You wouldn't normally put a graveyard on the west side. Normally on the south side, there's no reason why it shouldn't be, unless there was something here, and it's then built down the hill. A chapel of ease would not have its own graveyard in the Middle Ages. You can just see there those wind turbines on the hill turning with the glow of sunset behind. So we'll do our normal wander around north side first. 
yes, the stonework here is very much Victorian. Nice bench. A very nice vestry. And here so there's the moon glowing over the hills. And of course to me, because I'm looking at this, it just it looks huge, but to you, because you're looking at it on the camera, it looks a bit disappointingly tiny. There uh, lumps and bumps. Don't look like village lump, bump, lumps and bumps there. These uh, early English style windows. Again, it's, it's this simpler design that's quite useful um, if what you're trying to do is build a simple church. So we, we carry on here round to the east end. Now there isn't any inscription giving me a date, so we'll have to go with my estimation that it is late 1860s, maybe early 1870s. There's some terracing visible over there, definite old field systems. And these yews, uh, now that is quite similar to the approach at Bradley. So that just indicates the way they did things. You see there the little bell cot through the yews. <laughs> and here is the U Avenue. Now it's very gloomy at the moment because as I say, the sun has just set. So I'll have to finish this fairly swiftly just because of uh, lighting constraints. I don't have a, a lighting rig or anything. And therefore, uh, and even if I did, it wouldn't work. Oh, I see the outdoor light appears to have uh, admitted it doesn't work. It's full of water. And that generally gets in the way. Open, open door. I will close it when I go, but they say leave it open if someone's visiting, and I've left some of my equipment in there. And so back down into the old graveyard. So there we are, have it, St Philip's at Lowe. Well, we'll conclude the video and then I shall go on my way. And so here we have it, St Philip's at Lowe a 19th century church with a pulpit from an older chapel on the same site and an old graveyard that slopes down toward the river. This is clearly an, a much older site than it appears from the church. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. It's, this is only the second time I've ever been to Atlo and uh, in the evening it's an incredibly atmospheric place to be. Uh, it's just... I, sh I shall leave you and I shall just enjoy the evening in Atlo here and then head home. Well thank you for watching and may God bless you and keep you in his grace and his mercy at this time. And I enjoy making these videos, it's just something I do to uh, amuse myself to some extent on a Monday when I've got a day off and it's a nice day like this. What better way to spend it than to go up into the Derbyshire Hills and or down into the Shropshire or down the Cheshire Plain or whatever, but go up into Derbyshire Hills and enjoy the, the beauties of God's creation and the, the beauties of these little and sometimes not so little village churches nestled here in a valley. It's such a beautiful place to be. But I must stop waffling on. Well thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the next one wherever and whenever it is. Good night, good evening.